Okie dokie, so we're getting ready to fit the uh, electronic ignition. Or in our case, we're refitting it um, because we've got some of the ignition to fit. Uh, but the black box, this is a black box, box tri-spark system. Uh, there's also the newer system where there's no black box. And so the whole unit fits uh, is like there on the rotor plate and fits inside the, the uh, points cover. But this is a slightly older one. Well, when I say older one, you can buy either system still. Uh, but this is the system with the, with the black box. So what we're going to be doing is, in our case, we're going to be refitting uh, the rotor as it's called in the uh, in the points cover and then putting the um, sort of trigger plate or whatever they call it the sensor plate I think that's it sensor plate uh, okay uh, in in there and then running the wiring up to the uh, box and then we're going to be checking now the wiring has obviously already been done from the box but I'll be checking that because this is a problem that I'm now dealing with someone else's wiring. As you can see, it's all going to be a bit fun. There's wires everywhere. I've got to start trying to work out what's what. But I will be checking the wiring from this box uh, later on. Obviously, we've got to take it apart anyway to get in to make the connections from here. For a start, I mean, there's one thing, and, and, and I'll mention it now. I'll probably mention it again. Uh, I've had a quick look. And um, A, these are 12 volt coils. I know they're 12 volt coils. You probably can't see it, but it says 12 volt on the top of the coils. So uh, that's, uh, that's a you know, bit of a clue that they are 12 volt because the wiring is different for the 12 volt and the 6 volt coils. I'm just looking to see if we have a ballast resistor fitted. If the ballast resistor is still there, it looks like it's been taken out. So I need to check on that because the T160 normally had a ballast resistor fitted. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, still to this day, I'm unsure exactly what the ballast resistor ever did or does, but um, it's something about, I think it's about reducing, um, sort of maintaining current to the ignition when you press the starter because the starter takes so much power. Uh, I think I'm right in saying that that means that there can be not enough power going to fire the ignition. And the bias resistor stops that happening. That's what, as I understand it, but I may be wrong. Okay, but one important thing is that it's got the HT leads on coming off the coils, and someone has helpfully marked the coils, you know, number three cylinder, number one cylinder, and number two cylinder. So that's all very handy until I've traced them back and they're around the wrong way. The wrong way around on the coils. Now, the thing about coils, and there is a convention on this, is that there's number one, number two, and number three. But number one is always next to the timing side. So it goes one, two, three, not one, two, three. So number one cylinder is on that side of the bike, and number three is on this side. And this has been, not that it matters, but they've been put in the wrong way round. So they're saying that like number one cylinder is on this side. No, number one cylinder is over there. So I will be swapping the HT leads round only because, uh, and I'll be telling the owner about this in case, you know, because there's always some confusion because you think you sit on the bike. And so it's obviously one, two, three. But it's not. Number one is always, or the convention, the convention is always that number one is next to the timing side. Now, I say convention because I've had the, my E-Type Jaguar. Now, E-Type Jaguar is a six, straight six cylinder, uh, you know, one cylinder, you know, in, in line. So six cylinders in line, same as a BMW six cylinder. But the convention, and I can't remember which way around it is because it's been a few years ago, but the convention was something like number one cylinder was always at the back towards you know and number six was by the radiator but jaguar had did it the other way around so number one was at the front and number six was at the back or the other way around i can't remember but what i do remember is that jaguar went the opposite way to every convention so you've got to be careful with these conventions but generally speaking certainly on old bikes i have no idea about a modern bike but on old bikes like this number one is on the timing side 
two in the middle obviously and three on the on the uh, drive side okay um what else yeah so we're going to be um yeah so we're going to be uh putting the engine to top dead center we'll do that in a minute then we're going to be turning it backwards to get the um before top dead center the timing mark in the right place which is fully advanced and that's that's how you start fitting the ignition when the engine is set to fully advanced on number one uh, before top dead center the mark the timing mark we'll do this obviously in a minute but that's where it's set and we'll fit everything according to that run the cable around then connect it to the black box check the the wiring from the black box is okay i'm sure it probably is but i'll just check that uh and, and we should be okay so it is it's relatively straightforward fitting the uh, electronic ignition this is tri-spark i i do recommend i do i've only ever used tri-spark it's much more expensive than boyer branson etc etc but i do find it very reliable that being said you, i've heard horror stories about it you hear horror stories about every ignition um i do know that there is a problem that i that a weird problem that if you use a um is it a Boyer power box, you know, a combined regulator rectifier. So to replace the old Zener diode, if you use, that's a Zener diode and that's the old rectifier. And you can get a modern power box, it's called, which is a combined regulator rectifier. And it's much more efficient than this original ones for charging the battery. But apparently that can interfere with the black box. So it's, it's weird things like that you've got to be careful of. You know, you wire everything up and think, well, I've got a misfire. What, what's happening? And you don't know that you've got a Boyer Branston power box fitted, which is interfering with the signal and causing all sorts of weird running problems. So, you know, there's always some weird problems that can come up and bite you in, bite you in the arse, basically. But generally speaking, it's pretty straightforward. So touch with this will be. Okay, so uh, uh, we'll start... Uh, uh, yeah, we'll start fitting now. So the first thing we're going to do was we're going to sort the engine out and get it in the right position with number one at fully advanced. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention was, of course, I have downloaded the instructions uh, from the internet. I think all the uh, all the makers of electronic ignition they now have all their instructions on their websites. So you can, whatever system you've got, you can go on their website and download the correct um, fitting instructions. So obviously I've downloaded the ones for the TriSpark triple uh, with, the, with the box fitted. Um, and, and so and it's got the wiring diagrams and so on and very, very straightforward, very generally, generally very clear uh, instructions. There's the odd, the odd anomaly, which I shall mention uh, when we go through. Okay, but obviously very important to have the uh, to have the instructions.